are back again with another week of Techie Tuesday. To close out our 2023, the remainder of December, we are going to talk about some of the most frequently asked questions we get about the command system. So what we wanna cover today is how you guys can get content from other sources into an email campaign for command. That way you're able to utilize your email lists that you have from your database inside of here but still be able to use the content that you're making on other platforms. So the best way we're gonna do this and some examples of what you might be doing this for, we could be sending out a newsletter. Maybe you wanna make something really fancy here in Canva, but you wanna be able to again, connect over to all of those people that you have in your command. Another option is maybe you're sending out something for the holidays and you're wanting to send out that announcement, but again, you wanna make a really cutesy flyer for it. We could also just be sending out real estate in general flyers. So if that's your open house flyers or anything like that, then we are going to try to take a look at how to get these types of items into your command emails so you're actually able to reach that database. What you're going to do is you're gonna finish fully editing the flyer or the post inside of whatever editing platform you have chosen to use. The most common one we see here is Canva, but if you are using Adobe or any other platform for creating flyers, fully finish your flyer, make sure it is ready to go, it has everything that you need on it. Once it is finished, we are gonna click on the share button Again, depending on what platform you're in, it may be in a slightly different area, but there should be a place where you can download this. When we download this, we are going to download it as either a PNG or a JPEG. I usually start out with a PNG. If I'm told the file is too big, then I switch over and I download it as a JPEG. A PNG file is going to be a slightly higher quality file um, so it is going to be slightly larger as well. So I always start out with the PNG. You're gonna go ahead and download that to your computer. Once you have it downloaded, you're gonna go back into command and we're gonna start our email template. So we're gonna say create design here in the corner and we're going to say email. Once we're through there, we are going to ignore all of these templates and we are going to start completely from a blank template. Inside of here, if you do want to include any of these other widgets, you are more than welcome to. The first thing that I do, because we are in Texas, we do need to follow the Trek standard and we need to make sure our two Trek forms are at the bottom of our email. Also, the easiest way to make your emails cohesive with things that you're sending out of Gmail is going to be to grab your email signature and paste it into here. So I'm gonna show you how you do that and how you actually edit that email signature so it comes out looking the way that you want it to look. And then we'll show you how to drop that image into here. So what we're gonna do first is click on the text box and we are gonna click, hold, and drag it over until we see the green line. That green line is where we are putting in this content block. So I'm gonna drop my text box right there at the top, and then I'm gonna go copy and paste my email signature from my actual email. Now that I have it copied, what I'm gonna do is double click here where it says insert your text. That is gonna pull up where I can actually edit my text box. Then I'm gonna delete out what's already in there and paste in what I copied from my email. It's not gonna keep the formatting 100% correct, which is why I'm gonna show you what you can do next in order to fix it up. Now it should have carried your links over, so if you do have your two Trek links in there, you don't have to make any changes to them. They will already copy over with the links. That's the main thing we're trying to get out of this. We do need to make sure we have those Trek links there. Now we're gonna highlight over the entire thing. I personally like to have it centered, so I'm gonna center everything there. You can see also that this Facebook bullet here did not keep the link. These little images will not, so you will have to delete any of those out that you have, but any standard text links will go ahead and carry over. 
Now the next thing I want to do, I don't necessarily need my heritage logo way up here at the top. So I'm going to click on that and drag it where in this signature I want it to show up. Because again, you do have to have the heritage logo somewhere within these emails. So I'm going to drop that here at the bottom and you're going to see we now have our compliancy here. So we're good to go on that. The next thing I want to change is my name. It's a little small for me. I'd rather it be a little bit more noticeable. If there is one particular part of this text box that you need to edit, highlight just that portion and then make the changes that you need. So I can go ahead and change just my name to be a bigger font. I can bold or unbold it underline it, whatever I want to do here, change the font color, and you can see it's only affecting my name. If I did want to make changes to any of these other items, I'm more than welcome to. Once this looks the way that I want it to look, we're going to go ahead and click done. Now you can see I've got this really nice, pretty email signature right here for me, and it matches the one that I use when I send out from my Gmail account directly. The next step is going to be actually getting that flyer, that image, whatever it is, into this email as well. All we need to do is just like we dragged and dropped a text box, we are going to drag and drop an image box. Now we're going to want to put this above our email signature so you can see the green line being inserted there. And then if I've already uploaded this somewhere, then I will have it under my images. If you have not, then you'll go to add images. Where it says drag and drop your files, you will click right there and then you will have a list of files. Go ahead and pick the one you need. Here is that PNG that I saved just a moment ago. Once you've dropped it, it's not going to automatically accept. You're going to click on it right here and then you're going to hit save. Now you see that it has entered that flyer into my email template. Also right here, I can preview how it's going to look if they are on a tablet or if they are on a cell phone. So these are the ways that it should come out once it is in there. Now I can go ahead and hit this little eyeball here. That is again going to let me preview what this email is going to look like when I actually send it out. So there is my fully finished flyer that I am sending out. Again, if you're doing this with maybe that newsletter template one more time, we will go through, we're going to download this as a PNG file. Once that is fully downloaded, we are going to go over to our email. Say you do need to change this photo out because you updated something in the flyer. You can just click on the photo itself. Down at the bottom, there should be a little edit pencil. Sometimes it does appear in the top corner as well. If you click that edit pencil, you'll see our image right here and we can go ahead and replace that image with whatever it is we are needing to change out. And then once you have hit that replace and you've put it in, you can see it has not quite made the change yet. What I'm gonna need to do is hit done and that's gonna replace it. So now I've got my really pretty newsletter that I made in Canva, but I'm able to email it out to all of my database within command. Now I recommend if you do all this email signature stuff down here and you get it the way you want it, that you label this your master email template. That way you never have to worry about doing the email signature again. All you will have to do each time is switch out the photo that you're using on there. Up here in the top right corner under options, you are also able to send yourself a test email to whatever email address you would like so you can make sure that it is coming through exactly how you want it to before you're sending it to your clients. Then in this corner, you're gonna just close out of it. You'll hit the X and you'll hit save changes. If you did want to use this master email template again for something, when you hover over it, you're going to see the three dots in the corner and you're going to say make a copy. That is going to create a copy of the master so that you can always leave the master email template the same and then you can just edit the copy. That way you always have something to default to. Now this does save chronologically. Typically you can change that. 
but you can also search. So if this email template does get pushed back in your files, if you search for master email here, you are going to be able to find just your master copies of things. And then you can go from there. Now the next step is going to be actually sending this off to your database. So if we go to this campaign section here, you are going to see at the top there is an email dashboard. This is where it's going to track what's happened to this email after you have sent it off. You could also insert these emails into a smart plan if you have additional steps besides just the email being sent out. Say you need to send the email and you also want to text them. That would be when you would use a smart plan. If you're just needing to send the email out, then just go ahead and do a one-off email blast. You're going to see here it says I have 4,999 emails. With command, you do have 5,000 free emails a month. This does reset back every single month to 5,000. They do not roll over, but they do reset. Now, when these poll, they are pulling from anything you send out through campaigns, as well as anything you're sending out through smart plans. So if you are noticing that some of these have been taken away, odds are you're sending out something like the monthly neighborhood nurture. So it is pulling from these emails. Inside of this email dashboard, we can also control our email lists. So if you need to send this out to only certain subsections, or if you need to send it out to everybody, you can create that list, go through and pull all of the contacts that you need to, and that way the list is already ready for you. Once you've done your actual email design and your email list, you are ready to send this email out. You're gonna say create campaign. You're gonna choose the option for email. You're gonna go ahead and name it whatever you are doing with this email. This little piece here is just for you. Nobody else is going to see this. So what we're going to put here, say this is our December newsletter. Under your goal, this is again just for your tracking purposes so you can see how the different styles of emails have performed. In this case, I'm going to say this is just brand awareness. I'm just trying to get my name out there again. Under campaign where it will run, we are going to leave it at command email. If you do have MailChimp, um, leave a comment. We can discuss the integration with MailChimp, but if not, always just leave this here at command email. Once we say create campaign, it's going to take us into this section. Step one is already finished for us. We did that when we started the campaign. Step two is going to be what email address is this going to be sending from? If you need to change this, you cannot change it within the campaign. You are gonna have to go into your settings and into your marketing profile to make those changes. Under recipient list, if you created your list ahead of time, you are able to come here and just grab the list that you need. If you do need to create it while you're also doing the campaign, you can do that as well and you can create it right then and there. Again, step four, this is something we can only change from our settings page, but this is going to be the sender name and the email address that if anybody responds to this email, it is going to go back to. So if you hit this edit pencil, it is gonna take you over into your settings where you can change that. Under subject, that is the actual subject line of the email that they are going to be seeing. And then under content, this is where we are going to be able to go and pull that email template that we had used for this. If you did need to change the name of the template, you can do so. Now, once it's open, I've already finished all my editing. I do not need to make any changes. So I'm just gonna hit this little X and go ahead and click on save changes. Now you're gonna see my preview again here on the right side. I can triple check that I am sending it to and from the correct place. And once I am ready, I can choose to schedule it out if I want it to go out on a certain time or date, or I can send it out immediately. If I do need to come back to this for any reason, I can also save it as a draft so I have access to coming back to it. Once you have actually sent this email out, you are going to be able to come back to your email dashboard. It is going to tell you the status. So if it's processing, if it's been mailed out, it'll let you know what the status is. And then if you actually click on the title of that campaign, 
it is going to give you a breakdown of how that specific email campaign performed. If it's got delivered, opened up, if someone unsubscribed from you, it will tell you who that person was. If it didn't send because you were blocked or have a bad email address, it'll also give you that information back. Another place you can see the analytics behind your email campaigns is in our reports tab. From reports, you can go to the email report here at the top, and that is gonna give you a breakdown for the entire month for both your campaigns and your smart plans and other miscellaneous things you may be emailing from command. Then we can see our percentages and how we are performing month to month so we can track if these campaigns are actually paying off for us. So that's gonna be the entire process. But again, if you do have those items inside of somewhere that is not command and you need to get them into an email campaign, download that item as a photo and put it into your email template as a photo. If you have any other questions or need additional help with this, reach out to us and we will see what we can do to help you out. But until next time, thanks for tuning in.